Hello friends, this is a case of left sided indirect inguinal hernia. This is a complete inguinoscrotal hernia of the congenital variety and this is a adult patient around 30 year old and we will do trans abdominal preperitoneal laparoscopic hernia repair. So, we started our dissection of the peritoneum from medial umbilical ligament and then we can see we are just at the level of inferior epigastric vessel. The teflon jaw of the harmonic is kept towards the inferior epigastric vessel, so that it should not injure and then we will go at 10 o'clock position up to the anterior superior iliac spine on the left side. So, if you are right handed person then for left hernia it is better to start from medial and then go lateral. So, now almost reaching 6 centimeter lateral to the outer margin of deep ring, we will turn little down so that separation of the flap of the triangle of pain will be easy. And after cutting the incision of the peritoneum, we will not use any energy source or any sharp dissection, we will just do the entire surgery with the 2 atraumatic grasper. So, first we will do the lateral dissection, then medial dissection and then sac dissection. So, this is the pocket being prepared lateral to the triangle of doom that is the area of triangle of pain. Here we are using two ipsilateral port and that is our usual practice in the tap hernia then we use ipsilateral port. So, that you have the better movement and you do not have to abduct your hand. So, this is now the lateral dissection is over now we will do medial dissection and then the medial umbilical ligament will be more medialized and bladder will be pushed inferomedially, so that we can expose the Cooper's ligament and then we can also see the space of radius. So, this all dissection should be blunt and we should avoid in this area any sharp dissection. We can see Cooper ligament just about to start visible and with the shaft of two instrument you can just separate the medial aspect up to the pubic tubercle and here we can see that this is the bladder is medialized and this is the pubic tubercle above is the inguinal ligament going and medially just here the pectineal ligament that is also called Cooper ligament is visible. So, medial dissection is also over and after lateral and medial dissection, we will do the sac dissection. So, we have to pull the sac inferomedially with one atraumatic grasper and we should push the transversalis fascia away. This is a complete inguinoscrotal hernia, so we will get a large sac and gently sac should be pulled and the transversalis fascia should be pushed and posteriorly you should also take care that vas and spermatic vessel should not be damaged. So, in this process we have to be careful that pseudo sac should not be held that will look pearly white in color and pseudo sac should be pushed back to the defect and the sac has to be pulled carefully.
this is in free epigastric vessel above and slowly sac is coming out and posteriorly vas and spermatic vessel also we will keep away and avoid holding directly the vas and spermatic vessel. So, left hand grasper is pulling the sac and right hand is pushing the pseudo sac back into the defect. So, we should also try that we should not make any button hole in this process. This is a large sack. and behind we can see the vas and spermatic vessel. So, you can make a window posteriorly in between the sac and vas and spermatic vessel. Ambidextrity is required sometime right hand can hold and left can push sometime left will pull and right will push. So, we can see below it is the cord structure that is the spermatic vessel that you should separate from the sac and then slowly there is a small lipoma also which is coming out and this is the spermatic vessel is separated from the sac. Now, the sac is almost free. Sometime if the sac is not coming out, you may cut it and leave the remaining inside the escrotum, but here we are trying to take it completely out. So, it is separated from vas and spermatic vessel. And now, this is the pure sac. And that is out. So, this is now separated how you will know that it is fully separated you will put it back and then you can evert the sac by going into the defect and this pocket of the sac we can see it is out poaching and it is completely out. 
So, you will see that it is completely out and uh, before the dissection this was making the like that it was going inside in the defect and now it is everted out. So, this is the dissection is complete we will separate the peritoneum little bit more medially or laterally. So, that we can have the bigger pocket to spread the mess nicely all around the triangle of doom, triangle of pain, trapezoid of disaster. So, entire myopectineal orifice will be just completely covered by the mess. So, this is we can see the vas and spermatic vessel and above is the inferior epigastric vessel. So, this is the area triangle of doom area and in between there is iliac vessel. If you see carefully you can feel the pulsation of the external iliac artery and this is called triangle of doom. Now, here this is the Cooper ligament again you can see pearly white color Cooper ligament is also visible. So, our dissection part is complete now we will put the mesh and mesh will be covering the entire myopectineal orifice and it should be spreaded inferomedial margin of the mesh will go to the Cooper ligament and it will cover everything. It will cover inferior epigastric vessel, vas, spermatic vessel and the center of the mesh should must be in the center of the defect. So, it is spreaded after that we will fire one tacker over the Cooper ligament that is complete inferomedially and another over the suprolateral over the arc of the transversus abdominis. You may use suture also to fix it, but in this case we are firing the tacker. So, we can see here through the transparency of the mesh this is pearly white colored Cooper ligament is visible. And if you will touch you can move the patient also because tip of the tracker will give you tactile sensation and another is suprolateral which you can apply on the arc of transversus abdominis. And now we will do the covering of the double bracing and here you know the sac will also give you extra peritoneum to do the peritonization and sometime you may take the sac you can cut it out, but generally what we do that we fix it with the near the anterior superior iliac spine the sac and then we use it to cover the mesh. So, it will give you double layer of peritoneum. So, that button hole will not form at the time of covering the peritoneum you should decrease the pressure of pneumoperitoneum to 8 millimeter mercury. So, that tacker will not cut out and there will be no window formation no button hole. So, we can see now that entire mesh is covered and there is no visible mess. So, surgery is over and entire sac is also used for peritalization. So, thank you very much for watching this video have a nice day.